Hey everyone, this is Lucky70x. Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. The last episode, we've gained the trust of the Gorons. It's time to explore their temple in search of the pure metal. Uh, I forget which one is Crimsonite, I think it is the one here. It makes sense. Fire, red, Goron, red. I don't know. But anyway, Goron Temple time. We didn't even uh, go inside there last time, but we'll finally take our first peek inside here. And uh, the Goron Temple awaits us. Very interesting enough, it's a very sand-based uh, temple of sorts, and has a very interesting couple mechanics to it, but it's also a re relatively short dungeon, all things considered, so uh, we should be able to make progress fairly quickly here. Beware of the quicksand! Try to go inside it, it will not end well for you. So it's not a pit, so there's actually uh, certain things we can do using that, uh... Yeah. Ow! I've shocked my... Ah! I want to do the... There we go. It's another problem of trying to do that. Is sometimes you end up doing the jump attack instead, and you hurt yourself, and it's bad times. But uh, it's probably easier than taking the boat, because if you do it right, then uh, it makes these guys fairly easy. As usual, bombs take out those guys fairly quickly, and uh, so on and so forth. But like I said, a few interesting mechanics of this area, of this dungeon. First of all is the fact that, as you can see, once I off the switch here, uh, the spikes came back, as usual, as most switches do. So what we need to do is, uh, there's a little thing here that we need to pull onto it, way down the switch, it's the usual sort of thing. But yeah, like I was saying, the, the sand's really interesting because you can you fall on it, it's essentially a pit to you, but for a certain mechanic that we're going to get uh, encounter later in the dungeon, it actually will... There's, there's a reason why it, it uses sand instead of a pit, it actually uh, becomes pretty viable later on. So, now we have another switch to open this door, but unfortunately, uh, as, like a lot of things in this dungeon, if you try to go off the switch, it will uh, bring that door back down. So we need to deal with this thing. However, this one's not so friendly. Bring out your bombs, as you can hit by the bomb floor behind there, and uh, we can then defeat it and drag it up to the switch there. So basically the first part of this dungeon is a course in uh, throwing things onto switches, essentially. Also, there is, in fact, a uh, switch here, but it'll cause a treasure up here. But you'll have very, very few seconds to get it. So we can't get it from there quite yet. Also take note of this eye switch. It will be important later on, but it's too high for us to reach now. Because Link has the inability to shoot up, sort of like Mega Man. So the trick for these guys then is to get your bombs out way faster than that. Come on. There we go. Oh, my bombs are... Oh, hey, you're on the... You're on the... No, that guy's on the switch. He's fine. But let him get onto... The really? That didn't... There. Wow, that was just dumb. Make sure you keep your bombs out. You kind of have to do some really fast, reflexive bombs here. Oops, I did There. Stay on the switch. There we go. Um, so it's handy to have your bombs ready at any given time for this first section, so you're not stuck like that, like I was, uh, because then you'll take a while. But the trick is, if you want to save a little bit of time, just drag them over to the switch, and then uh, you can knock them onto the switch when they're nearby. So the way you get that treasure chest... Throw a bomb down there, it'll it react to the switch when it hits the wall. Although, bombs will fall into the quicksand if you aren't, uh, if, if they land on the quicksand, they're too heavy for the quicksand as well. But you'll get yourself a treasure map, yet yeah, another treasure map for us to get at some point in the future. So, as you can see, the bombs sort of vanish the moment they hit the quicksand there, so keep that in mind as well. Speaking of bombs, we now have two of these guys, so just get them uh, to come after you and ready your bomb and take them out. So, the bombs are very helpful against those guys, they're the only way you can really take them on. And, uh, having a, the ability to quickly get your bombs off, make, just keep your bombs ready at any given time, it will help you out in taking those guys out. But that actually takes care of the first part of this dungeon relatively quickly. Do not forget, though, that there is an eye switch over here, and now we're at the height to hit it. We shoot it in the, in the eye, and that'll cause a second treasure to appear. This treasure will be inconsequential because it's only 20 rupees. Not very exciting, but... Oh, you're a guy. I will shoot my shockwaves at you. Shoot my shockwaves at you. There we go. And uh, we get our usual Mr. Guy here who's like, Oh, you got all the church chests on the floor. Good job, mister. And we know don't really, really have to deal with him. So, cracked wall plus bomb equals, hey, let's uh, go inside. But it's going to be one of those sort of bomb puzzles and the fact that, oh, we can't get anywhere from here, but you can see there's a door over there. Exactly two sets of pillars away, so one, two, throw a bomb there instead, and then uh, we'll be able to 
head forward. So the middle one doesn't have a bond wall and it'll just lead to the sand pit anyway, so there's no point, obviously. So don't worry about that one. Just head upstairs and we'll be on the, uh, or you guys head downstairs and we'll be on this floor where we're gonna have to deal with a few enemies here. Uh, just dispose yourself of these guys. Make sure you don't throw the bombs onto the sand pits, like, like you said. Uh, they'll be annoying, and then just shoot the skulls with your arrows. Because we don't have the flame sword attached, I don't think we can attack them with our sword. I think that's, uh, you need to have the ability, the, f the fire sword, to hit certain invincible enemies. So the fire sword does come in handy for a lot of things, but the bow is adequate enough anyway, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. We get ourselves a guy here who will tell us how many treasure chests are left on this floor, and it is two. So we'll go ahead and spend 20 rupees to see how that, that, that is, and there's a... Uh, Two of them there, so we'll do the usual thing of marking them down on our map. And now we can uh, keep going. So thank you, Mr. Wibbly Wobbly. Timey Wimey, we can now head forward. So, uh, mysteriously, there's spikes that are not there anymore, but... Well, that's not gonna last very long. And also, Gongoron's here! Hey, guy, you were kind of a jerk to me. But now he's been captured, like all people that you escort into these sort of dungeons, and well... You can guess it, it's kind of, it's not quite an escort thing, this is actually a, a pretty cool mechanic that happens, is, uh, basically, we gotta get a, we gotta help rescue a Gungoron, but first we have to fight a guy, but we've seen these guys before, we know how to deal with them, so we're slashing a few times, spin attack to the, ow! Do not interrupt my spin attack to your face! That's rude. But it doesn't bring down the spikes near us. It brings that down the spikes near Gongoron. And here we actually have a fun mechanic that we have to do a little bit in this dungeon. Uh, Gongoron can move forward, but we can't. So we actually have to switch between the two of them. We get to control an actual Goron in this dungeon, which is kind of exciting. So those spikes are in the way, but Gongoron can take care of them. So uh, basically we're going to switch back and forth. There'll be a little icon there. Tap the icon. And then if you want to go back to a Link, you can switch back and forth, uh, so on and so forth. So. It's fairly interesting if uh, basically they share damage, so if one of them takes damage, the other one will as well. We are linked by destiny or something, but anyway, we need to switch to Goron Lucky. So if you just move around, he'll roll around and break pretty much everything with his body. And then uh, he has a basically a point and click attack, just like Link does, where he will jump on things. He can break the rock chews without any sort of effort, which is awesome. Um, so just kind of hop on them, and you can pretty much destroy them and just do the Goron thing and roll over everything, destroy all of the rock chews, and uh, progress can be made then. So the spikes are blocking Gangoron, but they're not blocking Link anymore, so swap back, and we can head down here again. So we have some Lake Lakes, we don't approve of Lake Lakes, so uh, the best way to handle them is just by sniping them with a bow a bit. I mean, you can try to slash them, but sometimes you'll get stuck in the mouth instead, and it's not worth the risk. I guess they can steal your shield, technically. I'm not really sure because I've never seen them actually do it, but I'm not going to take that risk anyway because I don't want to spend the money on that. So uh, we head here. There's a switch here that doesn't seem to do much, and there's an empty space where a treasure chest should be according to our map, but it's not. And this guy gives you a hit because this game needs you to, ha to hold your hand like it always does. And that uh, sometimes you need to seek the help of others, and that would have been fine enough as well, but uh, then it's like stand together. So basically we both need to stand on the switch. Wow, not very exciting. So... Switch to Gangoron. You can hop over this gap just by rolling over there. He'll automatically hop over it, even if it seems intimidating. And we're uh, able to get the big chest of this dungeon in nine minutes only. And we get ourselves some bomb chews, the thing I've failed to not spoil half the time in the game. But these are actually fairly cool. Bomb chews are actually a lot of fun. Because uh, you'll place them down, they'll basically run around on a path that you can draw. And then, uh, but until they actually explode, you can only have one out on the field at a time. So, they're cool. I can see why they're not in the next game, though. Why they're not in Spear Tracks, because they're a little bit awkward to use. Um, actually, we'll just go ahead and do a test one, even though we have no reason to use it right now. We only have ten for now, by the way. But, it brings your map down, and you basically can just draw a path. It can go across the sand as well, so say if we want to hit this guy from a distance. You can also kind of see as you move around, it kind of works in a sort of grid pattern here. So, uh, it's not as fluid as most drawing is in this game. Oh. Except, you know, half the time you don't see that there's things in the way. And then they, you hit the things, and then you're set. Here, let's just... Yeah, I kind of have to watch the top screen there to see that, make sure you're not hitting anything inadvertently. So you can avoid the thing, and, you know, you get some long-distance bomb action going on there. It's a cool item, but for now, uh, doesn't really... It's actually not really necessary for now. We have to deal with, uh, 
some Organ Goron stuff who just loves to hop around, destroy everything, and I love it. That's fantastic. And he's just the best Goron around. But that being said, he also will sink in the sand, so if you try to go in the sand, you will not be successful. But the snakes can cross the sand, so enemies and Bonchus can cross the sand. You cannot. So, that's kind of the rule for sand. Neither of your characters can really do anything with it. Go ahead and heal up here, leave Gongoron over here. And uh, as you can see, the door opened up nearby. So, it's time for Link to go on an adventure again. Head down here, and... Uh, there's another chest in here, so all we need to do is just kill all these snakes quickly. And that will cause the chest to spawn. I believe it'll also allow us... No, we have to do the thing with Bomb Chew, obviously. We just got Bomb Chews for a reason. So we get the Goron Amber. Oh, well, no, we did have to get that because it gets rid of the spikes there. So, gee, thanks for that. Luckily, you get some free Bomb Chew here. And uh, all you need to do now is basically do something... Basically, it's the hole that we've encountered 50 million times in the... Uh, in the Temple of the Ocean King. So now we have bomb shoes. Next time we go to the Temple of the Ocean King, we're gonna be using a ton of those, that's for sure. So we've made the spikes go down, we can pass through, and uh, we can head to the next area, basically. Gon Goron has nowhere to go, though, but apparently he's going to squeeze through that tiny hole that snakes came from. Sure, Gon Goron, uh, that does not seem very safe, but Gon Goron's gone for now. We're on our own again, so our destiny apparently isn't linked anymore, because if he dies in that tiny little hole, apparently it doesn't matter to us. So we're going to go upstairs first. There's really not much to do up here other than just a quick, uh, you get a nice little quick shortcut back. You know what? No, I don't want to deal with you. Get out of here. Uh, so you get a nice little shortcut back by using up a bomb chew here and just hitting the switch here, so... It's a little awkward to draw the paths, but it still works. It works decently enough, and if you're if, since it has that grid sort of system, it's hard to explain them exactly, but thanks to that grid, you can uh, essentially... It, it's not too hard to use. So, it is it is still slightly awkward, though, I will admit, so that's why I can see why I didn't you know make it to the next game, because it's, it's a little weird, but I like it nonetheless, so it's, it's interesting. It's just not something I want to do all the time. Hey, I can actually hit him with the shockwaves. Ha! It does not have nearly as much damage as the arrows do, but it's kind of cool for what it's worth. So, we have another bomb chew section here. All we need to do with this is basically go into the hole, go through this hole, and hit this switch. Or at least that's what you think you have to do. But the truth is a bit more interesting, because uh, there's a switch over here as well. And we actually have to time it so we hit both of them at the same time, and I don't want to get out of here, I suck, or you suck, I don't suck, you suck, but uh, in case you couldn't tell you to hit both, both the switches at the same time, one with a bomb shoe, one of yourself, of course the game pretty much tells you that blatantly, and a bomb shoe can do all the work for you while you stand around, cause I am a statue, and I will tell you everything you need to know, because you don't need to think. So bomb shoes can still work from all the way over, I don't think that one actually worked, you can luckily you can cancel the drawing if you don't like it. So there we go. Get through the hole there. Get through that hole. Okay, that should be successful. And now all we have to do is wait. You can actually tap on the bomb tree if you want to watch it go. But there we go. Hit him at the same time. And the path to the next floor will open up as well. So that floor actually took uh, was pretty quick, but we'll be, we'll be making our way back there soon enough. And no sign of Gangoron. I guess he actually is dead. Well, that's a shame. Too bad he tried to crawl in a snake hole by himself because that does Oh god, there's pots that are flying at me! That's something you don't see every day. Anyway, we got a little bit of a few munchkins here. Destroy them, as you do with all munchkins. And uh, they still drop 20 rupees at a time, which is nice, now that I have all of this hyper-inflated rupees thanks to the pink coral I did at the end of the last episode. But another 20 rupee thing. Not very exciting, but it's... It's what the game wants to offer you today. So now we have an interesting puzzle using the... Uh, the red blue th mechanic here and bomb shoes. Kind of, you know, your status quo Zelda puzzle, I suppose. That, that doesn't seem remotely successful. There we go. So you want to bring it around this thing, bring it around this thing, and hit the switch. There we go. So as soon as, it, you, as, soon as you see the bomb shoe pass the red, you hit, hit the switch, turns to blue, it'll pass the blue, hit the switch, spikes go down, puzzle solved. So this guy will be the one that tells us all the treasure chests on the floor. I don't think there's... Is there any still? There's no treasure chest left. There's actually a very few treasure chests in this dungeon. It's actually, like I said, a surprisingly short and quick dungeon, all things considered. So, we have another one of these guys. In fact, we have 
three, four of them. Oh, they hit me into the, the pit, and we have four switches. So, kind of have to do a thing of these. Just blow up each one near a switch just to minimize all the time you have to spend pulling them. In fact, if you can get them to land on the switch, all the better. And, uh... Use your bombs wisely, as Peppy Hair would say. Hey, guy. Come over here. I have a present for you. Boom! And I believe all of them are on the switches except for this one. We need to be pushed up one. And with that, we have all four guys on the switches. The spikes go away. And we can continue on our merry way. It's an inter I mean, this isn't a terrible dungeon. It's also just not very exciting at the same time, though. Like, it's not awful, but it's also kind of... Like, okay, the Gon Gorma mechanic's cool, but then it just, they don't use it very often. So, we need the big key here. Luckily, we have a way upstairs here, so the big key, as you can imagine, is somewhere here on Basement 2. In fact, this guy should tell us the rest of the treasure chests on the floor. We have two of them left. One of them will obviously be the big key. One of them obviously won't. So, we have them on the map. We do our usual thing of, hey, there's a chest here, and there's a chest here. And then we just need to go ahead and get the chest. As you can see, Gon Goron pretty much... Just was there for about roughly two seconds before the game was just like, okay, you've had your fun. Back to being told what to do. And here we have another enemy room. I think it's just, yep, two of these guys. We fought two of them at a time before. It's not too difficult. Just get the, Actually, if you can get them at a good distance here, you can then proceed to spin attack them to the face here. They'll deal a little bit of damage to you, but you know what? At this point, I have so much health that I'd just rather kill them quickly. Uh-oh, I missed. There we go. Oh, I missed that guy too. Okay. Let's, let's time this out well. Boom, boom, walk up, spin, attack, to the face. Everyone's dizzy, including me. It's quite wonderful. I'm just like, this is just the dungeon where I'm just being stupidly reckless, but at the same time, like, this dungeon, like, the, the past two dungeons have felt more complicated than this, this dungeon has been. And like, the game gives you health everywhere as well, so it's just kind of like, I mean, okay, whatever. So we have a switch that triggers the spikes, and it lasts all about two seconds, as usual. So, as you can imagine, this is actually going to be a bomb chew puzzle. We also have a ton of enemies here. Luckily for us, we have Shockwave City to deal with them. As well as, you know... Well, mostly our Shockwaves and our sword, so... None of these guys are too threatening, especially because we can attack from a distance now. As you can see, I really like the Courage one. It's really handy. Oh god! They're everywhere! Get out of here! Don't want to deal with you. So, uh, head here by the thing, and then all I have to do is just use a bomb shoe. Heck, we could even use a bomb to do this, but, you know, whatever. Bomb shoes are new and exciting. We'll use bomb shoes. There we go. And now we just kind of wait, let the bomb shoe do its work, and it'll blow up the switch. And it's easy for us to cross, and we'll be good to go. So, we get another statue. What thing are you going to spoil us here? Uh, basically, when you can't pass, look across the quicksand for answers. Because there's a lot of quicksand here. And basically, we have an interesting sort of task here. There's a lot of snakes. First of all, to get that second treasure to spawn, we need to kill all the snakes. So kill all the ones within reach, use your bow, kill the ones that are a little bit further out of the reach. I accidentally killed one I didn't even intend to kill. And then once you've uh, taken care of all of those, it's time to bust out the bomb shoes. And we want to do two things. One is kill all the enemies here. Because the enemies will be necessary, or killing the enemies will basically cause a uh, treasure chest to spawn at that spot. That treasure chest always spawn. And the other thing we want to do then is avoid the rocks and hit these two switches. They don't have to be hit at the same time. You can only do I mean, you can only do one bomb shoe at a time. You try to press your bomb shoe, you just watch the bomb shoe. You press the bomb shoe icon to basically see your bomb shoe. And thus, you're not allowed to bring out more than one bomb at a time. But uh, otherwise, we want to hit both the switches. It doesn't matter. They, they last forever, as far as I'm aware, so you don't have to hit them sequentially. Oh, wow! I killed that and killed the last enemy at the same time! That was pretty pro. So you get the big chest and the small chest, get another piece of Goron Amber, I mean, it's the Goron Temple. You'd expect them, I guess, I mean, okay, I'm not sure if they actually, it is supposed to be their poop or not, but, uh, that just means they're pooping in their treasure chest, I suppose, and that's just kind of awkward. Very strange temple. Anyway, in order to get back across, you just have to send a bomb true across the quicksand. It'll, uh, allow us to bypass the spikes, and from there, we already have the big chest! And the boss key. The dungeon's already almost done. It's a really quick dungeon. It doesn't even, it has one treasure map, and as far as I'm aware, it doesn't have any gems either. Which I'm gonna double check after this episode, because that seems a little weird that we don't have any courage gems, or power gems, or wisdom gems in here. But apparently we don't, and I mean, I like the other games where taking the boss key was kind of a cool, like, mechanic to the, take the boss key to the door, like in Spirit Tracks, I mean. This one, like, it's always just a straight line, and then you just throw it into the door, and then you're done. 
it's really not that exciting. Phantom Hourglass had a lot of potential, but just so much, especially their dungeons. They're always so overly simple, it's kind of silly. So interesting thing here, we get more pillars, you think, oh man, I can bomb these and find secrets. And then you literally have a guy here who's literally like, boing oing, there's no secrets here, don't be silly. In fact, just for the heck of it, I'll prove it. Throw a bomb each one. Game's not lying to you. There are no secrets here. The game literally set, has a statue there to tell you, no, don't bomb the pillars. And you know what, I'll even bomb this one. There's no secrets here. Don't be clever. Don't be silly. So uh, with that, we have ourselves, you know, th there's no secrets there. It's just, hey, get to the end here. Finish the game. What are you doing? So we're here at the final boss of the dungeon. Uh, we have our usual step into the blue light, return to the temple entrance, shebang a bang. But uh, actually, I guess I'll just I'll show where it spawns just for funsies, and then we'll go fight ourselves a boss, and then beat ourselves a dungeon. It'll be good. So uh, we'll get you some hearts here. You can head over here if you want to replenish your bombs for some reason, which actually is a good idea because bombs actually bombs and bomb trees will be necessary for this boss. It's a very classic boss, actually, uh, especially for a Goron temple of sorts. You'll see quite soon, though. So we head over here, immediately you'll notice as we head in here, that the room has a sand pit. And we are pretty much limited to this side of the island. Luckily for us, we know bomb trees can cross the sand fairly well in attack. And it's a Don Gorongo. So it's not a Dodongo, it's a Don Gorongo. Whatever the heck that means. But it's basically a Dodongo. I can't wait to bomb some dog Gorongos. Yeah, that doesn't nearly sound as cool. But uh, because we're trapped on the side of the sand pit, we can't do much. We have ourselves a Goron to fight for us instead. That's right, we get to fight a boss with Gon Goron. It's actually, this boss is actually really cool. So you fight, basically you have to switch between the two of them to fight. You use your bomb shoes and your uh, ability to be a Goron to fight this boss. So essentially what you want to do is uh, lunch shoot fire, wait for him to do other stuff. Kill the snakes while you're there because actually I'll, I'll let the snake go. Or I'll let the snake go for now just to demonstrate what happens if you let the snake go. But uh... Essentially, eventually he'll, that's all the snakes will eventually try to cross the sand and attack a link. So you'll, um, the thing will flash danger on the top, on the screen there like you saw. And then you have to sw quickly switch to link, slash the guy, and, uh, switch control, and then switch control back before Gongoring gets in trouble. So that's essentially the main mechanic of this fight is, uh, killing the snakes so they don't let them do that. Wait for him to charge, he'll disorient himself a bit, and then they'll give you a chance to fight back, jump on him, it'll knock him to his side and stun him, and now his mouth is open. And you know what? Gorons hate in their mouths. Or, not Gorons. What? Dodongos hate in their mouths. I can't wait to bomb chew some Dodongos. So, insert bomb chew here. And uh, that'll, that's how you damage the boss in the end. So, just switch back to your Goron friend. Kill off the, the, the more snakes will spawn. So, just to save time, go ahead and roll them over. So, you don't have to deal with them anymore. And then, uh, he'll charge. Unfortunately, if you uh, get hit, you'll be stunned too long to do anything about it. You can try to attack him from here. But he has a very hard head and he rotates really fast, so you won't really get a chance to attack him from the side. Uh oh, I'm in danger. Hi, bye. So wait, for, just wait for a charge to happen. Kill all the snakes in the meantime. Uh, I'm not killing that snake. Okay, I'm in danger again. Hi, what's up? I don't like you either. Oh, he's oh, he killed the snake for me, and except then he hit me too. Come on, yeah, I still got a chance to hit him though. Oh yeah, knock him down. This is gonna be a little bit of an awkward bomb shoe, but luckily for us, the bomb shoes are. Uh, very nice to do. We'll go ahead and let that bomb shoot go. And while we're... Gone Goron! Why did you do... Wow. Just... Wow. That was actually a thing that happened. It's cool how they give you, like, sight... Like, the... The, uh, the Dodongo's sight, so you can see exactly where his mouth is when you're playing for the, uh... Your bomb shoe, but... Yeah! Just... Wow! That actually just happened. I actually just, uh... Did that. You know I'm gonna... Go ahead and... There we go. Hi! Hi, buddy! Oh wait, he's stunned. Oh, no he's not anymore. It's an interesting fight where they kind of uh, handle both things at the same time by seeing where the snakes are and there's two snakes coming across now. This is gonna kind of suck. Here, hi! You're a friend. You're also not a friend. Go away. Health. Bum. Hi! Can you charge me now? I feel like I keep missing the charge because of these stupid freaking snakes. Oops. That was a terrible roll. Hi. What's up? All right, you should do your charge thing so I can kill you because you're really annoying. There we go. Get out the way. Oh god. Oh god. Hit the wall. Boom. All right, let's finish this guy off. Or roll straight into the thing. 
Nope. Hi, you're... Oops. This is really obnoxious, kind of. Okay, now we go ahead and let you... Charge at me, please. Stop doing the fireballs and... You know what? Fine, we're gonna go kill your snake friends instead. Oh man, murder your snakes! And apparently there's still a snake across there. This is almost getting kind of annoying because I'm missing my opportunity to attack him because the snake's sick of these goddamn snakes in this goddamn boss fight. Hi, you're a snake. Die. Hi. Oh, now you're gonna charge me. Okay, charge me over here. Oh man. Oh, oh. That kind of worked. Somehow. Doesn't matter. Nope. Got, got, I'm busy here, Mr. Link. Kinda have to- hi, your guy. Die. Uh... Gongoron is definitely in the way here, so switch back to him. Hey, buddy. Hope you like bombs for breakfast! So that was a bit more obnoxious than I thought it would be. But, uh, yeah, that's how you kill yourself a boss. So, with that, a bridge appears, and yeah, the boss is dead. I mean, he hasn't vanished for some reason, but... I mean, Gungoran's gonna go up ahead, so it looks like we, we win, right? Yeah, we totally win. The Heartbeats and the Sands are totally up there. It totally isn't a trap! Yeah, guess what? It's a two-part part boss fight. Not gonna be that easy. So, now we have to fight the boss by ourselves. So, round two of the Don Gorongo. Oh, man. So this part, uh, he exposes his weak point, a giant button on his back. And, uh, well, we have to do the- you, oops, I don't want these, actually, you want to get normal bombs here. Okay, this isn't gonna work, but... Lots of fire! Lots of fire! Lots and lots and lots of fire! Lots of fire! Oh god, so much fire! Just run in a circle if he does that, because he does spits out a lot of fire, you're not gonna dodge it otherwise. So, essentially, you have to do the usual thing when he inhales, throw a bomb in his mouth. It's the traditional way to defeat the Dongos. So, wait for him to inhale, throw a bomb right in his gut, and now time to spin attack! To the Dodongos! Okay, I stunned myself for a bit longer than I should have there. But there we go, lots of damage onto him. I'm not sure if doing spin attacks well, gives you a little bit of additional damage. Also, you still have to take care of snakes at the same time, but they drop bombs. This time instead of bomb shoes, which is nice, so. He'll do a bunch of fire, then he'll do his inhale. It's a fairly simple boss fight at this point. Uh, we've we handled the main mechanics, so now we just kind of have classic Dodongo fight. So beat the crap. It's so satisfying to beat the crap out of him like this, but. Well, he still got up here. So, round three, I guess? Third, third time's the charm, perhaps? So, do the usual dodge the fireballs. I still somehow managed to hit that one. I think I walked into it like an idiot. And then, inhale. And with that, I think we should hopefully be able to finish him off this round. So let's do our best, beat him up, and yep, there we go! The Dango defeat. I, do, I, de I definitely think putting a chain of four spin attacks perfectly at the end of that second session definitely increase the damage output because I feel like I had to do four rounds of this in my practice file and I feel like that actually added a little bit of extra damage in there so spun attack of the Dodongo and yeah if you're not getting any sounds from a boss it's not over yet pro tips pro tips go on facts anyway uh just go on facts I want a t-shirt that says go on facts that just needs to be a thing now too fan art of go on facts who knows I'm just gonna, this is just, I'm just, I've reached the point of LP dumb that I just want to, like, request fan art of everything, just for my own sick pleasures, I suppose. But we get some more sand in the hourglass, and, uh, two more minutes have been added, I think that brings us up to 18 minutes, if I do, my calculations are correct, or, no, I think it's 19 minutes now, because we got, didn't we get one minute from a treasure chest at some point as well? So I think we're at 19 minutes now. That's pretty cool. But, uh, actually we'll check before this episode's over anyway. So the bridge comes back, we don't care, we want ourselves a heart container. And that brings us up to... What does that bring us up to? 11 hearts? Not too shabby. And let's go get our reward! Gongoran awaits us! Slacker running off about me, you could've helped me fight that Dodongo, we could've double teamed him, it would've been amazing. But yep. Hello, Gongoran. Yeah, the guy kinda woke up, he wasn't dead yet, so... Oops. But that's okay, we knew how to bomb some Dodongos and everything. No, sorry! Don Gorongos, and uh, thank you, Gon Goron. You're a cool guy. So we've been successful and get ourselves a present, the Goron Pure Metal. Very exciting. So let's go ahead and grab that, and our victory will be assured. Uh, do you have anything else to say? Behold the Pure Metal, the Crimsonite. So our first of three Pure Metals to make the Phantom Sword. First of the three new set of MacGuffins. There we go. 
dungeon complete. So, the Crimson Iron, very exciting. So we did it, we got the pure metal! Linebex knows, yeah, yeah, don't compliment him, he's just silly. He thinks there's treasure everywhere. He got lucky this time! So yeah, thank you for your Crimson Eye. We accomplished our goal. We killed the Dongorongo, I suppose. We saved Gongoron as well. Don't get lost this time, Gongoron. For God's sake, use the teleport off. He also uh, hints to you that you should use a. Uh, you should go visit him when you get home. And in fact, we should do that. So I'm gonna quickly take care of. I know the, the video's already been gone on really long, but I'm gonna take care of a few quick things before we end this episode, just to uh, get him out of the way, so we don't have to next time, because it just doesn't feel right to start with. Because there's like. Three minutes of side quests, and that's it before we're done, essentially. That's why I threw some in the end of last episode. So, we're going to visit the Goron Chief, but if you remember correctly, there's a thing we can do with bomb chews over here as well. So, we'll quickly go ahead and take care of that little secret of the bomb chews over here before we go ahead and uh, head back. That's where we're going to head through the maze instead. Because, uh, I don't want, nope, nope, get out of here, nope. Uh, really? Maybe this is, nope, pick. Oh, you're a bad one. Okay, don't care. Bye. Leaving. Stupid rock chews. They're so annoying. You actually waste bombs to kill them. It's so stupid. You know what? Get out of here. I don't like you. Okay, so we're now here at the bomb with the bomb chew area. This will give us another treasure here if we do this. So bring the bomb chew there. It'll hit that. A treasure chest will spawn up there. It is a timed one. But you should have enough time from here to reach it regardless, so just hustle your bustle over there, grab the treasure, and it'll be yet another treasure map. So that's two we got this episode, not too bad. Uh, it's actually in the Southwest Sea chart, but like I said, we'll do a lot of treasure, mess, uh, treasure map gathering once uh, a few episodes have gone by, because we're about to come into a lot of new treasure maps very soon, so once that happens, we'll go on a nice treasure map spree. But for now, let's visit the Goron Chief, because he actually does have a reward for us as well. Not anything too special, but hey, Gon Goron, you made it back out alive. You're not dead. It's pretty awesome. You are a hero. We're both the heroes today, man. You did well. So Gon Goron's like, yeah, you did awesome. You can have the Crimson Nine. Do whatever you like. It's ours because we're so awesome. We know our Goron facts. And uh, we are a proud Goron member. So, unfortunately, though, it's time for us to leave. I mean, we do have two other medals to get. We can't stay here forever. We didn't really stay here that long in the first place. It's been two episodes. So, he'll actually give us back the Goron, the fee that we spent to, uh, to become a member, with a little bit of extra. And with that, we crack a 3,000 rupees. But that's not going to last very long, guys. We're not going to have those 3K rupees for very long. There's a reason why I made sure I spent that, or I stole that pink coral last time. And that's because we're actually going to need that money right now. And the way we need to do that is uh, right before we leave the island, we're going to head to the shop. Because there's actually going to be two things we can get at the shop now. And that's going to be very exciting. By the way, in case you're wondering, that Goron game on DS Island, that's not going to be available yet, which is why I'm doing the side quest stuff quickly now, as opposed to doing it next episode. Because there's literally nothing side quest to do next episode. We're going to go straight to the next area. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, the, the shop has a new reward for us. And that is the first of two bomb chew bags. The other bomb chew bag we're not going to get to later, but... We can get this one now, and that will be a uh, thousand rupees for that. But that's not all, guys. That's not all. By the way, that brings us up to 20 bomb chew. So very exciting, very exciting. What else we have is we head back in there again. After you buy the bomb chew bag, a heart container will become available in the shop for 1,500 rupees, I believe. No, 2,000 rupees. Okay, we have exactly enough. I actually needed to spend that uh the extra rupees from the Goron uh, membership fee. So we're down to 77 rubies only. Man, we've just gone bankrupt essentially. But, but we did just get a heart container and that's pretty awesome. So we're now up to 12 hearts now. And uh, with that, now we can go ahead and end the episode, guys. So we'll end the episode here. Uh, actually, one thing I just want to show up on the collection screen here. Now we have uh, the Crimson Eye on the top screen up there. And yep, 19 minutes, I was correct. So yeah. So with that, guys, we've taken on another dungeon and gotten a couple side quests and some stuff done quickly. But in the next episode, now more side quests. We're going straight back into the action. We're heading into that ice island and getting the rare metal that's there as well. So or pure metal, whatever, same thing. So straight to the next dungeon next time, guys. We're not going to miss a beat. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Lucky 70X signing out. Bye-bye.